Hello, my sweet friends. Welcome back to my channel and happy Wednesday to everyone. I hope you're having a great week so far. And if you're new around here, I hope you will consider hitting that subscribe button to join our crafty little family. I'm really excited to share this project with you today. If you love the ease of making a paper bag album, but you want your album to be much more sturdy and have a better finished look, then you're in the right place because today we're going to bring those two things together. First, I want to show you the inside. This little album is really fun and festive and I was able to use up quite a lot of a collection. So that helps me to work through my stash. On the inside, we have pages with pockets and inserts and all of these beautiful fun details like tabbed inserts on the edge. There's plenty of room in here for your pictures and journaling. And I think that you are going to be amazed at how fun and easy this was to create. So stick with me and we'll make it together. So whenever I go onto Amazon, I'm very careful to read the reviews. And that is the case for this project as well. I went on and searched for white lunch bag. And I was uh, aware that some of the listings that were available had some branding or um, some stamps on the bag itself. So it was not a crisp, clean white bag and some of them were a little thinner. So I was very careful to make sure to get one that was going to work for craft projects. The thing that I did not do is check the size. And so when I thought I was ordering this size, which is a standard lunch bag, I got this size. And when I opened the package, I thought, oh no, that's not going to be good. But actually, I really like it. And so I'm glad that I made that mistake because for me, this is going to mean that I can make a more standard size mini album. And so that's going to work better for my projects. It also came with these sweet little stickers. And so that was just a fun little added bonus. There's quite a lot of them here. So that was nice to get a little treat. Um, so this pack came with 50. That's quite a lot to work with. I will link it in the description if you want to check it out. Um, and I recommend um, this particular quality. It was really nice. It came in two days. So I definitely would get this again if I needed them. So I'm going to start by preparing the bag for joining them together to make the album in for my project today i'm going to use four you could definitely uh, adjust that if you wanted to add more or less inserts and because this is now going to be quite large it actually measures six and an eighth and that is totally fine i do want to use my pattern paper and my cardstock frugally so i'm going to fold this over on to the back of itself. I'm gonna make sure to line that up straight and nice across the bottom and go ahead and crease that. For my first bag, I did attempt to use my scoreboard and it wasn't really even necessary. It didn't do anything really. And then I'm gonna turn it around and I'll bring in my paper cutter. So this is just the guillotine cutter I use every day. I'm going to uh, hopefully keep this in focus. I'm not sure how that camera will go, but I'll line up my edge right along the six inch line. And I'm gonna go ahead and just cut off the excess of that bag. And that will also take the pinked edge off. And I definitely don't want that for my project. So now what I have is a portion that I can add to another portion to create an insert. And then I can bring those together as well. So I took my double-sided adhesive and I went around the bottom and the sides. I don't want to seal up the top because I want this to be a pocket. And I do want to use my adhesive combo of the double-sided tape along with my uh, Tombow just so that I know this will be extra secure. I'm coming in a little bit from the edge because I don't want this to splooge out and make a mess. But you definitely want to do that here because that will be much more secure. Then I'll just take the other bag I have prepared and line that up along the edge and the bottom. And these bags were made much 
more consistently than the lunch bags I have used. A lot of times when you mass produce something, a little bit of that measurement um, is not accurate. In, but I did find that for these white bags, it is much closer. So now I have joined these together and I would just maybe put my clear block on that and let it set up just a bit. Um, but we did put that double-sided tape on there so we can continue to work along. The next thing I did was put more of that tape all along the back on the outside edges. This is going to join the two inserts together. And like I mentioned, if you wanted to add more, you just have to think of them in increments of two because you do want to be able to have that pocket in the middle and then the full size pages on the outside. So I've got another one of those prepared already and I'll just join them together just like I did for the pocket page. The hardest part is keeping your fingers out of the glue for me anyway. And so I'm just going to bring those corners together and then just go ahead and press that into place. So ideally you would have a six by six inch book. It is okay to have it just slightly out of square. It will affect our measurements and I'm going to pop those up on the screen as I work along um, so that you will know how to get all of your nice borders. So this is basically gonna be the inside of the book. How easy was that? It is even faster if you're not talking your way through it, but you're gonna have your back cover and then these smaller portions are gonna be your pocket pages. So you'll have uh, two full size pages and a pocket page in the middle, and then the same here. And I'm gonna stop it too, but you could adjust yours however much you want. Now, the problem with this is as a base, it's just not very sturdy. And I do like to have a finished edge and I do like to have a thick cover. So here is where I'm going to bring the hybrid portion in. I would normally be using my 110 pound cardstock to finish the cover and the inside pages. For this, all I have to do is wrap that around. First, what I wanna do is put a spine on here. Now we're not going to adhere the very end because these are gonna be moving parts on the inside, but we do want to close that in because I want it to be a nicer finished look. This piece of cardstock is 110 pound and I have cut it to be six and an eight by five and then I scored it at two and three and that will give me enough to wrap around the spine and then come in a little ways so that I can add another layer over top and secure that cut edge. So I'm going to go back to my two layers of adhesive and I think it will be easier to pull the tape from one side and then go back and take off the other. So here is one glue and here is two glue. So like I mentioned, we are not going to be adhering that outside edge so you don't have to worry about having any adhesive there. The first thing you wanna do is kind of compress this as best you can. And I'm gonna line that up very carefully along my score line and so that it will open properly. Kind of just keep an eye on your edges and you can even pull apart the back a little bit as you're working along so that you can get in there and really give it a good pressure so that it is well adhered. So now you see that will cover the back and I'm gonna pull the tape from this side as well. So I think this is a really good uh, versatile base now. I did like those craft bags, the lunch bags, but I just think that a more neutral background will work with more collections. So I can just go ahead and change out my cardstock and you know coordinate to the collection I'm working on and this will be a really great way to get a lot of mileage out of that one Amazon order because it was um, a 
quantity of 50. So it will go a long way uh, depending on how many inserts you add. So, okay, now what we've got to do is pull this up a little bit because it is going to be a little bit more, um, so it's going to be a little bit wider at the moment on that spine because we haven't added all of the paper and all of the fillings in. So I'm just going to line that up with my score on the back. I don't know how hard that is to see because it's mostly just covered, but I'm going to go ahead and fold that over and then flip it so that I can press that down. So when I pull this up, you'll see there is a little bit of gap in that spine and we're going to fill that in when we get all of our paper layers added. So now you can see that we're going to get an inch on the spine and then these will stretch out. Now I want to do is add more thickness to the cover. So I've got two additional pieces of 110 pound cardstock and they are cut six and an eight by 12 and scored at six. So I'm just going to basically wrap that around there. This is not only going to add two layers of thickness, for it to be sturdy, but it will finish off that edge with a much nicer crisp fold. So let's go ahead with our two adhesive combo again, and I'll just go ahead and work and speed this process up. Okay, now our cover is done. It is so nice and thick and sturdy and we have that nice finished edge here. So we'll have two pages and a pocket, two pages and a pocket. We're also gonna get pockets here on the end and we're gonna address that a little bit later on. But first I wanna show you the collection that I'm working with today. This is Park Lane, Land of the Free. It's from Joann's. I did pick it up last year, but I did see that it was still available. And so I already have used this for quite a few projects and I was hoping to finish this up. I do have quite a few of the journal cards, the cutter parts left, and just a little bit of the paper left. So I'm happy about that. And I'll show you how I altered this card when we get into finishing the cover. We're gonna be working with a finished book size of six and an eighth by six by one. And so that is gonna throw our measurements a little bit out of square, but it wasn't difficult to figure that out. And so another nice thing about this project is all of the full size pages are gonna be the same size. So you only need one set of measurements and it was a really good frugal use of my 12 by 12 paper. And the cardstock measurement for this is going to be six inches high by five and seven eighths inch wide. And the pattern paper is five and seven eighths by five and three quarter and that will be all the way throughout and I'm gonna use the same blue card stock for that as well. So I think it will just be easier to flip this toward myself and then I can get it centered a little bit better. Remember one side is gonna be longer so make sure that you've got that side going in the right direction. You're just gonna get the nice borders all the way around and can go ahead and finish these pages as you work. So I'll just go ahead and add these now and then I'll join you here when I have them all added.
I'm going to finish the back and the outside of the spine while I have it laid out flat. So the spine is going to be six inches by one inch for the card stack, five and seven eighths by seven eighths for the pattern paper. And I'm just going to adhere that while it is laying down flat. I like to have it finished all along the outside as well as give it a little bit of extra structure. So we're gonna go back to the inside and work on our pocket pages. So once again, these are all gonna be the same size throughout. And this is going to be a cardstock height of six by three and three quarter. The pattern paper is five and seven eighths by three and five eighths. And I'm going to position it so that I'm making sure not to add a lot of bulk to the foldy part of the inside of the book, just so that I make sure to keep everything lined up and we don't add a lot of bulk in the center. I'm going to just alternate. I didn't have as many patterns left, so I'm just alternating the blues and the reds so that they will look like definite layering patterns. You could also come in here and add some little die cuts or other things like that if you wanted to. Let's go ahead and do this last page as well. So remember that um, you can also think about this size of book. If you're using up a six by six paper pad, this is gonna be a great way to not create a lot of off cuts and scraps, which does make me happy. So here is the last page. You can imagine how nice and thick this is getting. So it will be very heavy and sturdy with all of these paper layers. Remember that our pocket pages have um, the top of the pocket here and I've already prepared a couple of inserts. I didn't want to add too much bulk so I skipped the white card stack for these but I did have the navy and I finished them on both sides. So the card stack is five and a half by five and then the pattern paper is five and three eighths by four and seven eighths. And that way there'll be room to slide it into that pocket. And it will still have a little bit of the next page showing. So that'll be a nice way to kind of get a lot of detail as you're working along. And I've got the same for both. And I just thought that kind of non contrasting script would look good for both pages. So we've got that. Now the next pockets I want to address are those bags on the ends. And I don't want to fill these up with too many layers because not only is it gonna cause the book not to fold well, but I wanna leave a little bit of room in there for some additional flat mementos or keepsakes. So the trick is not to fill it up uh, right away. I do want to have some tabs showing so that I can pull them out easily. And the best way to do that if you have a envelope punch board is to just go ahead and use that to create your tabs. So my 110 pound card stock for these six inches high by six and a quarter. And then I came in here and notched my first punch and then I slid it down to two and a half, and then I notched my second punch. And then I came at this with my guillotine cutter and lined up the end of that indentation with the edge, and then I just used my guillotine cutter. And that gave me a nice, crisp, even cut that went along the top. So the 110 pound card stack makes this insert nice and sturdy so it's not gonna get bendy. You do want to finish it with your collection paper. So the card stack for this is going to be five and seven eighths by five and three quarters. The pattern paper is five and three quarters by five and five eighths. And that way you're gonna get all of your nice borders. 
I spaced those tabs very specifically so that I would be able to use my ribbon trim as a closure and not interfere with those tabs. The first one I can just slide in here and you can see that it will stick out just enough to pull that tab. And then the second one will go into the back. Now, of course, there's a little bit of room left in here in the pockets, so you can use that however you like when you go to finish the book. And there'll be a space for the ribbon to go here. Now on to the cover. So before you add the front cover you do want to include your ribbon if you're going to use that to tie up your album. I've just pulled off a generous length of this beautiful navy diamond uh, check from Really Reasonable Ribbon and I did put a little strip of my double-sided adhesive tape. This is just going to hold it in place and it will be well secured between the layers of the cover and my pattern paper. So remember that we have all the same measurements as we're working along and all of the same beautiful navy card stack, which is so perfect for all of the summer holidays. Now that trim is well adhered between those layers. I do want to include a couple of layering patterns and here is a great place to look through your off cuts. I didn't have um, many because all of my pages were pretty much the same, but I had some left over from previous projects. So I was able to pull these down. I alternated the red and the blue and then also the scale so that it would look like a nice layering pattern instead of being too busy. I do want to break up a little bit of this background pattern with a pretty doily that is die cut from a crisp white cardstock. I'm going to bring in a second layering pattern here and this is the wood grain that was part of that collection and I used a circle die to cut a border for that so that it would look nice and consistent. As I mentioned before, I'm going to use one of those cut aparts as my focal image. And this was part of a larger card that had blue and some stars around it. I just cut it very carefully, leaving about a sixteenth of an inch of that blue border around. And that helps it to look a little bit more like a piece of ephemera. And so I put that up on spacers so that I could build a little bit of dimension. Now we're going to bring in a fairly large floral arrangement and so I'm going to position this I'm going to position this out of center so that I leave room for all of those flowers. Before I finish tucking that on, I'm going to include a little die cut silver glittery star for the corner. And now for that flower arrangement, this is created mostly with my new set of cutting dies. These are spell binders, the Be Bold Blooms, and I absolutely love them. You may have seen them more on projects in my Etsy shop and on my blog. Recently, I'm having so much fun creating with them. And one of the things I really like about them is that you can utilize the card stack from your project to create the flowers and that means that they coordinate absolutely perfectly. You can make as many as you like in whatever size. So I did combine that set with my uh, Cinch and Go Poinsettia just because I like to, I like to alter the shape of the petals um, as well as the size so that I can get a nice full arrangement. And then also I did include a little bit of die cut foliage here. Rather than two shades of green, I went with more of that navy cardstock and then another of the silvery glitter stars. So this is going to fill in here along the bottom and you can see how having that nice curve from the doily really helps to kind of guide me as to where I want the flowers to go. And I'll just use a little bit of my hot glue here to adhere that to the cover. And that's all. I really hope that you will try this style of hybrid uh, paper bag album. I thought it was so, so easy to put together and the added card stuck on the outside helped it to be very nice and sturdy and have a good finished edge. So that's all for our project today. I found a couple more 
uh, styles of bag and color when I went to the Dollar Tree. So look forward to seeing more of this kind of project. I'll do some different pages on the inside and we'll have a lot of fun working with some different collections in different kinds of bag. So if you did enjoy this project, make sure that you let me know in the comments and leave me a big thumbs up for this project. You could find links to all our social media sites in the description. And if you're not already, I would love for you to join my crafty little family by hitting that subscribe button and the bell notification so you'll be alerted every time we add new content. As always, I'm wishing you a happy and productive day and I thank you so much for watching. Bye.